Hello everyone, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. This video is for GarageBand users looking to come over to Reaper to finish your projects. GarageBand doesn't make that easy. Uh, this is take four of this video because I keep finding things that it does in a really odd way, to put it nicely. So let's try this again. And we'll go over to GarageBand and I've got an example project here. This project has four MIDI tracks and some Apple loops. And this process is going to be exactly the same if you have recorded audio, like vocals, guitar, things like that. I'm zoomed out on this project, and if you notice that the grid changes color around bar 33, and this is our end marker, when we freeze these tracks, that's the maximum length that these audio files will be. And if we don't change this, they're all going to be 33 bars long, and the tail end of these files is going to be around bar 16. It's not hugely important to change that, but I know that it's not needed. So I'm just gonna drag that to bar 16. Next, we go to the track menu and configure track header. And we enable track lock. And that expands our uh, track controls a little bit with this little track lock button. What this will do is freeze the track, or it's going to render it as an audio file, and it will apply the virtual instrument to the MIDI. Effects that are happening on this track will be committed. So we'll just click on lock for each of these. And then we will play the project. Just hit play as normal. No sound is going to come out during that process, but it's going to render that as audio files and put them into a special folder. Spacebar to play. It's gone through that pretty quickly. I should point out that if I press A, there is automation for volume on these tracks. However, that is not committed when you freeze a track. So all of these are going to come out at the uh, recorded volume of these files. These Apple loops are very loud, so when you bring in your files into Reaper, they are going to be very loud again, probably even clipping. Another thing to note is that master effects aren't committed to this. So on your master, if you have the echo or any reverb settings on here, those are not going to be applied to your individual files. And finally, the volume in the, uh, the transport bar at the top that's not going to be applied to these rendered files. So uh, a lot of limitations there, but we've got through it. And now let's switch over to Reaper. Uh, I know that this project is 100 beats per minute. Let's go over to Reaper and I'll set our project to 100 beats per minute. I have no tracks in this project yet. Let's switch over to Finder. And here is my GarageBand project. We're going to right click and show package contents. And in here, in the media folder, there is freeze files and no sync. Because freeze files are technically temporary files that only GarageBand needs to use, and this is kind of a hack to get our consolidated files out of GarageBand, they don't have track names. And that's really, really annoying. I wish they would fix that. But anyways, we're going to copy there. I'm, I'm gonna go to my Reaper media folder and projects and i'll just make a new folder and this will be greatest song ever and i'll make an audio files folder in here and i'll hit paste why is going on come on come on Make sure you save that project before you try to copy those. So I'm gonna take these files, I'm going to drag them over into Reaper in this empty control panel area. Reaper will ask me if I want to put these on the single track or separate tracks, and I'm going to say separate tracks. While these are still selected, I'm going to trim the volume down by about 60 B. So I have a little volume knob, and so I'm just gonna trim that down I'm gonna set them at minus six just to give us some room to work with because all of these tracks had volume 
And there was also the master volume that was turned down in that project. Without that, these are going to uh, be coming out way, way, way too loud. So they're at minus uh, six. And if you're not seeing that, you need to look in the preferences. Preferences is in the options menu at the bottom. Appearance and media. Item volume control. The default is a handle zero dB at the top of item. Having it as a knob is really, really handy. In my opinion, it takes up less space, gets in the way less. So there you go. Okay, so we have our files in and we have the volume trimmed down by 6 dB on the items. These files are turned down before they go into the track so that you have more room to process uh, with automation and effects and things like that. These files are not named and that is going to be a, a pain for file management. So we can either just name the tracks here, which is easier, or we can uh, double click and go to rename file instead of dev 02 instrument 05 whatever uh, we can change this to we'll just call this synth 01 and that will update it in the project as well so we can see that that's named there and we will still need to name it in the tracks All right so uh, I'll just quickly do that uh, synth to. And so the mix is completely different, but we have our tracks out of GarageBand finally, and we can start mixing. We're going to have to redo some of that automation, some of the effects. We're going to have to change all the item, vo the track volumes now, but we are out of GarageBand and it will be a simpler process. And so that's where I'll have to leave you for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and useful. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. You can support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.